Good morning. Good morning to you in the narthex. Welcome. Come on in. <laughs> Welcome to worship at Christ Lutheran Church, where we live in Christ and share his love with all people. We gratefully acknowledge that we gather on the ancestral homelands of the Lummi and Coast Salish people who have stewarded this land since time immemorial, and we commit to the ongoing care of our shared land and relationships with its indigenous peoples. Well, blessings to you, especially this Memorial Day weekend. We will lift in prayer those who, and who mourn, who, uh, those who have died while serving in our armed forces. We certainly especially ask God to comfort those of you whose family members have died in service to our country. Today, we also, of course, will lift up in prayer those who mourn the tragedy that happened this week in Uvalde, Texas. We will lift in prayer all those who are victims of gun violence and consider what prayer does. As today we will hear Jesus' prayer for us from the Gospel of John. You're getting a little preview of my children's message, just so you know. <laughs> You'll see later. So next Sunday is Pentecost. We will uh, celebrate the confirmation of three of our young people. And I invite you to wear red. We often wear red to remember the gift of the Holy Spirit that blows through us as the fire in us and in our church. So we invite you to wear red. Also, today is our last adult education class on growing old gracefully. That will happen in the fireside room right after worship today. And confirmands, just a reminder that I will meet with you in the fellowship hall right after this class, right after worship. Next Saturday, we invite your prayers for those of us who will be attending our Synod Assembly in Linwood, George and Susan Holmes and Matt Springer and I, and all of the churches in our Synod will be gathering, and we invite your prayers for the ministry of the whole church. Also next Saturday is Godly Play on the Road with Pizza. So we bring our Godly Play ministry to the Ferndale Library. If you know of people children, grandchildren who may need to hear these stories, people that you know who might not step foot in our church, but might come to the library, please invite them. We want them to hear these gospel stories told in creative ways and also pizza, so that's a draw. <laughs> Are there any birthdays or anniversaries or baptismal birthdays to celebrate? Carol. Happy birthday, Donna, and it's lovely to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Yay, Donna. Carol. Happy birthday, Carol. Yes, Paula. My daughter, June, is on Oh, her birthday. Sweet. That's great. Anyone else? Okay, let's sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, may the Lord bless and keep you another year through. I invite you to take a deep breath, to release whatever burdens you have come here with, lay them at the foot of the cross. And hear these words from Psalm 97. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. I invite you to stand as you are able as we give thanks for baptism in this Easter season. Alleluia, Christ is risen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. 
You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and our lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another, respecting one another's comfort levels. And we sing together hymn number 656, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Uh, you may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the 16th chapter of Acts. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our cities. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds, and then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad. Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. 
The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Revelation 22. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their words, so that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And children, you're going to want to come forward. Tamar, do you hear me in there? Isaac, Isaac, come on. Come out for the children's message. you got to come for this. This is amazing. Anybody else who wants to see more closely is a child of God, and you can come up here as well. So Isaac and Natalie, you have to see this. We have a special guest here today. This is Becky. Come on out, Becky. Come here. Come over here. Isaac and Natalie, come over here with me. Can you come sit with me so you can see better? What is this? Who's that? A baby lamb. This is Becky, who's, who's only eight days old. Is that right? Tracy? Seven days old today. This is a teeny, tiny, sweet little lamb. Hi, Becky. Hello. Hi. Do you, do you remember, yeah, we, we won't pet her. So do you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about how Jesus is the good what? The good, oh, let's ask the big people. What is the good shepherd? Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the one who comes, just like Tracy is, to feed us, to help us, to support us, to love us. And today in the Bible, we hear that Jesus even prays for us. Do you think that the people that love you the most pray for you the most? I, I know that's true. I know your mom and dad pray for you every single day. And I know that Jesus prays for you too. 
it helps me to think I'm I am just like <laughs> I am just like a little sheep. You are just like a little sheep. Jesus loves you. Jesus prays for you. Jesus helps you. Jesus supports you. And today we are assured that Jesus loves us. Did you hear that in the Bible story today, Jesus says, I want you to love just like I love the Father and the Father loves me. We are loved as much as Tracy loves this little one. And actually, Tracy, can you tell the story of what happened with this lamb? Uh, yeah, it was a twin. Oh, it was a twin. And mom did lick her off, but she was weaker than the other twin. And so um, she wasn't able to keep up. So I've been bottle feeding her, and I'll probably try to introduce her back to mom tomorrow with my dad's help. <laughs> so that's what a good shepherd does. A good shepherd cares for the little lambs, especially the one that need, ones that need the most help. And so today, whenever you see a little lamb, I mean, this is pretty cool that we get to see a real live one. Sometimes we just see them in books and stories. But I want you to remember that Jesus loves you as much as a shepherd loves a little lamb. Jesus takes care of you, protects you, and loves you all the time. Should we give thanks to God for that? Can you pray? Let's pray. God, thank you so much that we are your sheep and you are our shepherd. Please continue to help us, support us, and love us, and give us what we need. We thank you, Jesus, and we love you. Amen. All right, thanks. Thanks, Becky. Very nice to have a little, sweet little lamb here. You can go back with Tamar if you'd like. <laughs> thanks. I met Becky yesterday, and I was like, oh, we've got to have Becky at church. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, our creator, Christ, our risen Savior, and the Holy Spirit who dwells within and between us. Amen. I'm going to assume that more prayers have been lifted to God this week than in a long time. Whenever there is a tragedy like a mass shooting, people often say, I keep them, I keep you in my thoughts and prayers. And if people truly live up to what they're saying, I am certain that God has been overwhelmed with prayers this week. In today's gospel, Jesus is praying. In fact, it is what's called the high priestly prayer, in which Jesus prays for himself, prays for his disciples, and prays for us, those who he says will believe in me. Now, in the Gospel of John, there's no Lord's Prayer. There's no prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. So this is Jesus' main and final prayer in the Gospel of John. And what Jesus is asking for in this prayer is the unity of his followers, that they may be one, Jesus says, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me, loved them even as you have loved me. That they may be one as we are one. Well, it sure doesn't seem like Jesus' prayer has come to pass, does it? We aren't really one, are we? I mean, we saw it this week after the shooting in Ilvaldi, Texas. Undoubtedly, we were all of one mind that this tragedy never should have happened. But what to do so that it never happens again? We certainly aren't of one mind in our country, and perhaps not even in our church. And if Jesus prayed this prayer 2,000 years ago and it never has there truly been unity in human history, what is the difference that Jesus' prayer makes? And honestly, it begs the question of what difference do our prayers make? Now, I have to admit to you that even as a pastor, there have been times in my life that I've questioned what good my prayers do. There been a, there's a member of our church who always says to me that my prayers mean more than their prayers because I'm a pastor, and I really assure them that is not true. <laughs> but sometimes even my prayers and the fervent prayers of many faithful people don't come to pass. 
And it kind of makes you wonder if God really hears us and what good our prayers are doing. And yet Jesus tells us to pray. Jesus shows us how to pray. And so perhaps today we need to reflect a little more deeply on what prayer is and what prayer isn't, about what prayer does to us and for us and for those for whom we pray, and what it really means when we pray for things that we aren't sure will really come to pass. And so let's look again at Jesus' prayer here in the Gospel of John. Do you remember the context of this prayer? It's the night before Jesus dies. Jesus has already been betrayed by one of his disciples. He knows he's going to be denied by another one. He knows the next day that he will be crucified. And so clearly there is no unity here. And yet Jesus prays for unity, all the while knowing that he will be betrayed, denied, and crucified. What Jesus shows us is that prayer is trusting that what is, is not what has to be. It is about truly believing that the worst thing that can happen is never the last thing that can happen. It's about imagining and naming the kind of life and world that God wants for us. It's about having courage not to give up, and even knowing what might happen, still having hope. It reminds me of what Martin Luther said when he was asked, what would you do if the world was going to end tomorrow? Do you remember what he said? He would plant a tree today. That is hope. What Jesus teaches us in this gospel passage is that prayer gets us outside of ourselves and our own limitations to have hope. In the Gospel of John, Jesus doesn't pray that this cup passes from him. He doesn't even pray in this portion of the prayer for himself. But he prays for his friends. He even prays for the one who has betrayed him and the one he knows will deny him. When Jesus prays for others, he removes the focus from himself to God and to the one for whom he is praying. And you know, when we pray for others, prayer also removes the focus from ourselves and connects us to God, our trust in God, and to the person or the people for whom we pray. I feel like prayer is summoning the Holy Spirit, that wind, that spirit of God in the space between us and God, in the space between us and those for whom we pray. And honestly, it matters less what we pray than that we pray. You know, this week, when you prayed for the loved ones of those 19 children and two teachers who died in Uvalde, you were summoning the Holy Spirit. You were connecting with God and with those for whom the worst thing possible had happened. Your prayer was a protest against the worst thing. Because it didn't matter exactly what words you used or the length of your prayer, but your prayer did matter because you trusted it was not the last thing for those families. Prayer brought you close to God and God close to them, and it also brought you close to them. And isn't that what Jesus meant when he prayed for unity? That we might be close to one another. Now, I do want to remind you what prayer is not. God is not a genie in a bottle that grants us wishes. Prayer is not giving a laundry list of what we want to God and then sitting back and waiting for God to make it happen. When we pray for something, we're not passive. Because what prayer does is to help us work toward that for which we are praying. When we pray to to God to ask for something, we're letting God know that we are willing to work toward this ourselves. When we pray for an end to school shootings, it motivates us to join or support an organization working toward gun violence prevention or increased mental health resources. 
When we pray for our enemies, we are telling God that we are willing to extend love and forgiveness. When we pray for the health of someone we love, we are promising God that we're willing to support their physical needs too. When we pray for peace, we are covenanting with God that our own actions will be peaceful and that we will be a model of peacemaking for others. Our prayer isn't primarily about changing God's mind because God has already promised to be with us and those whom we love. But what prayer does is change us. It changes us to be more trusting of God and to be more like God. And when we pray for things that don't come to pass, it doesn't mean that God has abandoned us or others. Our prayers, even when not answered how we ask, remind us that God is God and we are not. Even our prayers that don't come to pass have the power to increase our trust in God because it means we're calling on and relying not on ourselves, but on the God who created us and redeemed us and promises to walk with us. Finally, we must recall what Jesus was truly praying for us in this high priestly prayer. Jesus didn't pray for a unity of mind. Jesus prayed for a unity of love. That the love with which God has loved Jesus may also be in us. Jesus prayed that we might love one another. You know, prayer works. Perhaps not in the ways that we might assume, but God does hear us. God does draw close to us. God does expect of us partnership toward the things for which we are praying. And mostly God promises us love. I'll end today with the prayer of St. Francis. It's a prayer you might know. It's a prayer that helps us to increase our love toward God and toward each other. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, Joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may, I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life.
profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, of all that we have seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. God of not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death from his spirit. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Liberated from sin and set free from death, we pray to the God of resurrection and hope for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples, especially between Ukraine and Russia. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry especially those we lift to you now, aloud or in our hearts. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Relieve the suffering of all who have experienced gun violence, especially the communities of Buffalo, New York, in Valde, Texas. Grant them a deep measure of your peace and renewed faith in your protection and care. Protect us all from the violence of others. Help us bring offenders to justice. Keep us safe from the weapons of hate and restore tranquility and peace. God, in your mercy, hear now God what else is on our hearts. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager, eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We sing our offertory. Mm -hmm.
and in all places, we come to you with thanksgiving and praise. You have loved us from the beginning and bless us in countless ways. And especially on this day and in this season, we thank you for the risen Christ who gave his life for ours and lives again. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 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 May be seated. The ushers will dismiss you for forward for communion, where from me you can receive a cup with both bread and wine, or from Linda a cup with gluten free bread and grape juice. You're welcome once you receive that. You can come to the back here uh, on the altar rail to receive or go back to your seats. You may also put a prayer in the prayer wheel or light a candle for those for whom we are praying. Or just listen to the music and let the taste the sound of this gift fill you and be assured of God's love.
stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may be light in Jesus' name. Amen. And now God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And on our Memorial Day, we sing, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies, two verses, number 888. 